Today, let us study the Word of God under the subject, The Way Back to Heaven. When it comes to going to heaven, how are you preparing for it? If you can't get a feel for the kingdom of heaven, think about going abroad. What should you prepare first? You should learn the language of the country and prepare the cost for staying there. What else should be prepared? The passport, right? Don't you also have to know about the basic laws of that country? What you should and shouldn't do? When you prepare all these things, you can go abroad. When people are asked, what should you prepare first to go overseas? Most of them reply, it is the language. Thinking, am I ready to speak in that language? People are so stressed. If you can't speak in their language, you find it difficult to buy food. Though you enter the accommodation, if you can't say, do you have a room, the people there can't understand why you came. If you need a room, or came to find someone who's staying there. That's why people say that they need to learn the language first before going abroad. During national holidays or a vacation, many people go abroad. They say that the greatest problem they had overseas was a language. In order to go to the eternal kingdom of heaven, we too must learn the language of the heavenly kingdom. In the heavenly language, there is no term complaint. When we go to the kingdom of God, do you think there will be anyone who will say, God, why have you brought me to heaven? All who have entered heaven will only give thanks to God saying, Thank you so much for bringing me to heaven though I'm lacking in many ways. Would there be anyone who thinks, God does not love me, so that's why He brought me to heaven. We must learn to give thanks to God in everything. If you want to go to America, what do you have to learn first? It is English, right? You should at least learn the expression, excuse me, and I'm sorry. Aren't they the basic expressions you must learn? Likewise, in order to go to heaven, we must be ready for that. What do we have to prepare first? It is language. The language we will speak in heaven. In heaven, there is no words about complaining such as, Why did you bring me to heaven? Why are you making me live in this place? Only what kind of expression exists then? Thank you very much for bringing me to this wonderful world, though I'm lacking in many ways. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a heavenly citizen. God showed us the 40 years of the desert life as a model. While God was leading the Israelites from Egypt to the land of Canaan, those who could not speak the language of Canaan fell away about halfway. Canaan represents the kingdom of heaven. On the way to the promised land, what words did they speak? They spoke words of complaint and grumble and negative words. Oh, we can't do this. We can't do it for this reason and for that reason. They didn't find the conditions that made it possible, but the conditions that made it impossible. In 2018, we must throw away all those negative words. Today, we're going to study the words of God under the subject, The Way Back to Heaven. All of God's words, God's will, is for us to make the best preparation to enter the kingdom of heaven. From this moment on, let us not speak faithless and negative words. 
let us continually throw away complaints and grumbling. We cannot be accustomed to it from the beginning. However, we must make ourselves ready. When I'm lost, how can I get to the destination I want to go to? What should I say to people that they can recognize that I'm lost and lead me to my destination? When I go to America, if I cause somebody inconvenience and want to express how sorry I am, what should I say? Before going abroad, you practice how to speak in each situation, right? Likewise, we need to learn the heavenly language when we return to heaven. The heavenly language is the most important thing. Then, what words are used most in heaven? People there use the words of giving glory to God most. They also use the words of giving thanks to God a lot. But not the words, it's impossible. Everything is possible in God. Everything is fulfilled for sure. So, the heavenly language is composed of the words of faith. For example, if you are only relying on a small boat in the open sea, what is the most necessary thing at that moment? Suppose that you got on a boat to go to America, and on all sides are the vast sea that you cannot tell the directions. What do you need the most in that situation? You need a compass. Let's suppose that you are wandering in the dense jungle. There are trees here and there, and you cannot recognize north, south, east, and west. What is necessary at that moment? It is a compass. The Bible is like a compass. While on the way to the kingdom of heaven, if we find it hard to tell which direction to go, we need to look at the Bible. The Bible shows everything that we must do in that situation. Among them, there are many teachings about words in the Bible. Thank you. I appreciate it. It can be done. It will surely be done. God is with you. Please cheer up. God will surely help us. We should not say, Oh, I'm afraid that I can't make it. I feel like I'm deserted. I'm treated as an outcast. Those thoughts or expressions lead us to other ways than the way to heaven. Everyone, now, the eternal kingdom of God is getting close. We should keep learning how to speak the heavenly language. What if you fail after trying once? Although you want to go to America, can you learn English right away? Though you've learned some, you forget it. Though you meet a foreigner, you cannot speak a word. You go blank and forget everything, right? If you experience it once, twice, three times, and more and more, then you can talk to foreigners smoothly. As for the heavenly language too, we must practice it repeatedly. We need to train ourselves to be godly. God showed us 40 years of life in the desert as a shadow of entering heaven. So let us see what words led them to the land of Canaan. As for this matter, let us study the Word of God. Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers, that our forefathers were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, 
for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. According to Hebrews chapter 11, without what is it impossible to please God? Faith. Then the reason God was not pleased with most of them was because most of them had no faith in God. As they had no faith, such things happened. The kingdom of heaven is the world we can enter with faith, right? In heaven too, there is a language. With our own language, we can never go to heaven, so we must practice the heavenly language before entering it. If we have a trip to another country, we need to learn the language of the country so that we can get something to eat and accommodations as well. Also, we can avoid pain through the nose. Likewise, we should learn the language to use in heaven. Let's see verse 5. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered over the desert. Now these things occurred as what? As examples, to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in pagan revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality, as some of them did, and in one day 23,000 of them died. We should not test the Lord, as some of them did. Testing God with words is not a heavenly language. In heaven, no angels test God with words, as some of them did, and were killed by snakes. What did they also do? And do not grumble, as some of them did, and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us, on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. We must not wait for the kingdom of heaven vaguely. The Gospels say that we must be awake and ready. Ready for what? Am I ready to use the language of heaven? With what mindset do the heavenly angels serve God? With what mindset are the angels carrying out the will of God? We must learn and prepare all these things today. Before, when I went to America, I looked around our church vicinity in L.A and found that there was Koreatown. I went into a Korean restaurant for lunch. Since the owner of the restaurant was Korean, I talked with him for a while. While conversing with him, I learned that he could not speak English, even after 10 years since he had been in the States. When he arrived in America, he thought, once I live here, I will be able to learn the language naturally. But as he only met Koreans, he could not speak English at all. He said it was very hard for him even to submit a receipt to the public office. I was startled hearing that. I, too, thought that once people go to America, they can speak English. But that wasn't it. Everyone, whether you are in America or in Korea, if you don't make efforts, nothing can be done automatically. Nothing can be solved automatically though you stay there. In the same way, we must keep learning the heavenly language while living on the earth. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for this much grace today. Thank you for allowing me to learn about father and mother on the earth. Thank you for allowing me to participate in the work of God even a little bit in the environment and space given by God.
We need this kind of language. Many of the Israelites fell in the desert. Among the reasons, grumbling was one of them that caused them to lose the right to enter the land of Canaan. All children of Zion, let us look back at ourselves. Is there anyone who grumbles, even in good circumstances? People grumble in the environment where there are things to complain about. But some others do not grumble even in the same environment. Why not? It's because they have a different viewpoint on the things that are taking place. I have told you this story before. There was a mother who had two sons. One son was an umbrella seller, and the other son was a straw shoe seller. This mother always grumbled against heaven. On rainy days, she grumbled that her son's straw shoes didn't sell. On sunny days, she grumbled that her son's umbrellas didn't sell. According to the point of view, it was a situation that she could not help but grumble. But such a person has never practiced giving thanks, even for a positive and hopeful thing in her lifetime. On sunny days, she should have given thanks to heaven for her son selling many straw shoes. On rainy days, she could have given thanks for the other sons selling many umbrellas. But she didn't think like that. Rather, she always pointed out things to complain about in everything. Her sense of finding things to be thankful for was completely dead. Everyone, we were told, repent, the kingdom of heaven is near. It means that we will go back to heaven soon, right? In order to go back to heaven soon, we must learn the heavenly language first. We should learn how the heavenly people are living and what kind of habits they have in their lives. For this, God showed us that all those who grumbled were destroyed. It's because grumbling is not a language of heaven. According to the book of Revelation, what did Apostle John give to God always? He always gave glory and praise to God, saying, Thanks and glory be to you. What if we grumble and complain while claiming to serve Heavenly Father and Mother and follow their teachings? I'm sorry that you did not do this for me. I'm sad to be put in this situation. What are all the people around us? They are instruments to refine us. Let's suppose a member who is very close to me begins to treat me coldly. There must be a reason. God manages the earth and all things in the universe perfectly. When God brings rain, we should think, Oh, all plants will grow well as it rains. I thank you, God. But what if we grumble, Oh, God, do you bring rain today too? My son's straw shoes cannot sell. I hate this rain. We must not be accustomed to this kind of expression. We are the people who will live in heaven. Then, we should have the habit of using the language of heaven. We should learn it every day. No matter what trial and difficulty we have, we must always look up at God. Otherwise, we cannot help but think on our own. Then on rainy days, the straw shoe seller will speak against heaven for rain. Actually, if there is no rain, what will happen to all mankind and nature due to drought? All living things will not survive on the earth. Rain is essential. As he thinks in his own situation, he grumbles and complains about rain. It's because he only thinks of himself. 
Everyone, our God puts each and every situation around us according to His will. All people around us, the evangelists whom you work with, the members who belong to the same church, husbands and wives, there must be a reason why they are around us. Let us always remember that there is a certain reason and give thanks to God for the given environment and be content. And how should we speak? We should always speak the words of thanks and contentment. Rather than saying, Ah, this is impossible, let us say, Oh, let's give it a try. Let us make efforts since God has commanded us to do it. Though we're not qualified enough, as God told us to do, let's try. God surely fulfills this. As God leads the work, what can be impossible for Him? We must go forward with this faith. This is a heavenly language. In the language of heaven, there are no negative words, no words of complaints and grumbling. Grumbling thoughts itself do not exist. Let's fathom God's will in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Those who want to enter the kingdom of heaven must make themselves ready for it. Learning the heavenly language first while being on the earth, let us return to heaven. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12. Now we ask you, brothers, to respect those who work hard among you, who are over you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in what? Live in peace with each other. Living in peace is also required to those who will go to heaven. And we urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle, encourage the timid, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. And what else? Be joyful always. When we are joyful, what do we say? We express our joy with words. Even if people around us speak negatively, we cannot help but express our joy because we are really joyful to go to heaven. Pray continually. We can pray. Although we cannot deal with something, if we earnestly pray to our God through prayer and rely on Him, all our difficulties and hardships will be solved. Pray continually. And do what in all circumstances? Give thanks in all circumstances. All circumstances refer to every case. In any circumstances and conditions, we should give thanks. Would you say, I am a straw shoe seller. Because of rain, I had my business spoiled today. Although you had a little loss, in the viewpoint of all global villagers, it is good to rain. Without rain, how can plants and trees grow? How can crops grow without rain? So we should say, Thank you, God, for rain today for all people. A selfish person thinks of himself only and complains about rain. I should sell straw shoes today, but I can't because of rain. I hate it. We must not say that. In learning the heavenly language, God tells us to give thanks in all circumstances. Whether it is a good circumstance or an inconvenient circumstance to us, we should give thanks no matter what. For this is whose will? For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. In order to go to heaven, we must learn this language. Rather than speaking grumbling words, give thanks in all circumstances and try to understand God's profound providence in everything thinking, what is God's will and providence contained in this? When we go to America, we practice a few sentences at least before leaving. All our Zion members, too, must practice repeatedly from a small thing 
even though we are still poor at it. Now, let's see verse 23. May God Himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. While we are afflicted by the secular hardships of life on the earth, we've forgotten the heavenly language so far, and rather have learned the language of the devil, being deceived by him. All people of the world have learned the language of Satan, so they are all accustomed to grumbling and complaining. In order to become heavenly citizens, we must be able to speak the heavenly language. Isaiah chapter 66 says, Can a country be born in a day, or a nation be brought forth in a moment? It also says, Yet no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her children. What has not happened before since the creation of the world is now occurring around the world. There is a certain obstacle in every place we go. But there are surely children of our Zion. That's why we must preach. If anyone preaches with the thought, it's impossible. He must not yet be ready to enter heaven. Everything is possible in God. All is accomplished. When we become self-centered, we become short-sighted. But if we have a broad sight like God's, this earth looks just like a drop in a bucket. Everyone, we come here every Sabbath to worship God and listen to the Word of God. However, we should not just learn the Bible's knowledge saying, Oh, I know which book of the Bible this word is written in. God's words should become the way to follow. It is said that the truth of the new covenant is the way of the new covenant. Let us open our eyes a little wider. If you don't speak English, you can't get an American citizenship. Recently, I happened to talk with one of my acquaintances who obtained an American citizenship. I asked him, how did you get it? Then he said, I took an English exam first. When I passed the English exam, I could get the citizenship. Language is so important, even on the earth. Heavenly Kingdom also needs a language. The language of giving thanks, the language of being joyful, and the language of expressing faith in God. All these are the language of heaven. We were deceived by Satan and came to the earth and complain and grumble. We must not have a bad influence on people around us just because of a little inconvenience, but rather be considerate of others. It rains today. It's a little uncomfortable for me because straw shoes rarely sell in this weather. But for all parts of the globe, the rain is very valuable. Oh, thank you, God, for bringing rain today, too. Crops will grow well, and we will be able to get rice at a low price. Thank you. Shouldn't we think like that? If we think in the opposite way, I couldn't sell straw shoes, so I am so offended. I hate heaven's will. If we have this thought, the way to heaven will go away from us. Everyone, when we keep Sabbaths in the truth of the New Covenant and keep the seven feasts in three times, we should learn the way in the process. We should constantly learn the way through which we embrace the whole universe. Let us embrace all people around us in God. Let us accept all given circumstances with gratitude. If any member is lacking in a certain way, 
Think over how to lead him to God rightly and pray for the member. God, please open a good way for our brothers and sisters of Zion so that they can have confidence that heavenly hosts are keeping us safe. We don't gather on the Sabbath just to learn biblical knowledge saying, the Sabbath is written here in the Bible, the Passover is written there in the Bible. Such knowledge is required too. But in order to enter heaven completely, we should keep learning the heavenly things. Let us also look forward to the heavenly world as children of God and have this viewpoint always. When God asked us to lower ourselves, there must be a reason. Do not forget that you are a sinner. Lower yourself and repent of your sins every day. This is His clear will. You've granted too luxurious of a prison to this sinner. I was destined to die forever after committing sins in heaven, so I deserve a worse place than the earth. But I am living well, eating well, on the earth. I can go freely where I want to go. Oh God, how can this place be a prison? How did you send me to this good place? Whenever I think of my sin, I don't deserve this place. You allowed me to live in this good circumstance and even led me to Zion where I can learn from you. Come to think of it, there are tens of thousands of things to give thanks for, but we fail to overcome personal and temporary inconvenience and come to grumble again and again. In this situation, we cannot say that we are ready to enter the eternal kingdom of heaven. Everyone, we are all on the way back to heaven now. Let us engrave in our heart that God's Word is a compass that indicates the way back to heaven. What does the compass indicate? Does it point to the words of grumbling? Does it point to the words of thanksgiving? Does it point to the fact that we should learn the heavenly language? Let us check rightly which direction the compass needle points to and return to heaven without fail. From today on, let us practice. Of course, it is not easy to change in a day, but we must do it. If you complained about 10 things or 20 things a day, decrease the number of times. Now we must decrease it gradually. Oh, I give thanks for this. That is also thanks to father and mother. Let's suppose that your son got 60 points on a school quiz. Before, he got 70 points. This time, however, he got 10 points less. Don't scold him saying, how come you got a lower score? But say, your brain must be less tired because you used it less. Try more in other subjects to make up for the loss. You're a smart boy. Your efforts must have lacked this time. Why don't you make efforts a little bit more? Then your grade will improve. There should be a difference at home between those who have learned about God and those who haven't. Though people of the world wear a certain kind of clothes, you must not conform to the pattern of this world. The secular people live on the basis of the worldly standards, and we live according to heavenly standards. Let us all live up to heavenly standards. In 2018, above all else, let us master the heavenly language without fail and return to the kingdom of heaven. With this resolution and determination, let us learn the ways of God and put them into practice. Also, let us spread the ways we've learned from God to many people so that all nations of the world can return to father and mother with repentance. Hoping you've received much grace, I'd like to finish this sermon. Thank you very much.